Hi, um, today we're going to look at a game by Magnus Carlsen, who is um, currently the, the highest rated player in the world. And this game comes from the, the recent Weekend Z tournament, um, where he won quite convincingly. Um, so, uh, in this game he played against one of his major competitors, Sergei uh, Karjakin, uh, also a player of the same generation as Carlsen, but um, a bit of a different player. Um, so one thing that's different is that Karjakin, I guess, puts a lot of emphasis on the opening. He's very well prepared in that part of the game. And Carlson is more of an endgame general kind of player who plays um, consistently in all parts of the game. And uh, in this, um, this time he got a pretty nice position against Karjakin. And uh, let's just watch how he won this endgame where um, they have rooks and bishops of opposite color. Carlson is playing with the white pieces, and um, it seems like black had set up quite a fortress, and it's really hard to for white to break through. But let's watch how um, Carlson uh, tries to play for a win. So he starts by playing a four, and the idea is to restrict this bishop um, and place as many pawns as possible in the dark squares but also maybe to advance these pawns forward and to uh, cause trouble for the black king. So, uh, f for a few moves the players just kind of maneuver um, and Carlson just gradually improves his pieces and again he advances the pawns on the dark squares so that this bishop isn't really allowed to, to get active too much. Um, and so, in part, what Carlson is doing, he's just trying to kind of um, get the sense of what the opponent is going to do, and what, and get the sense of what he can do in this position. And it's really hard to play this type of end game for Black because um, really he can't do much, and he has to wait for White to begin some active actions. And White can break through with e6, f5, g4, uh, or he can maybe even advance the king here to d5 and just play for win that way. So it's really hard to know what to expect from the opponent and that makes it really hard to play. And Carlson is really good in this type of positions. Um, so, and in part because of that, uh, Black uh, was starting to get into time trouble and that's what eventually caused his downfall. But it's really difficult defense here. Um, and finally Carlson breaks through with g4. And what is the idea of this move? Well, the idea is that he really wants to get at these uncoordinated black pieces, and for that he wants to advance the pawn to f5, um, and um, he, so he wants to, to get rid of these two pawns, basically. Um, so for now he undermines the h5 pawn, um, and, um, well, if, if white's allowed to take on h5, then h5 is going to be a weakness, so... Um, uh, so Karakin can't let that happen, so he takes and now h5, this is the idea um, that uh, Carlsen had. Um, if black takes, which he should have done, then f5 uh, and um, f6 is going to win the piece. It turns out that this was the way to, to actually make a draw, because black gets his own pieces very active, and even though he drops a piece, uh, with the king so active, he'll probably just give a check um, with a rook back and forth, and and really, this this would probably be a, a perpetual check and a draw. But uh, it was really hard to understand and calculate this in time trouble. So instead, Karakin played the uh, rook h1, and after this, it turns out that the g6 pawn is very weak, and that's what Carlson gets at uh, in in this game. So he's going to transfer the bishop to d5 and to e4, undermine the pawn, and then he's going to have two passed pawns in the center which are still very well placed to advance against this bishop. So rook e6, um, the game goes on. And and the fact that Carlson had lost the pawn before wasn't really a big deal, it was just a temporary thing. And um, he gets his pawn back yet again, but he still has two advanced pass pawns, and these pawns are just not going as fast enough, not nearly as fast enough. and. Uh, Another aspect of this position is that the black king uh, may be in some danger because he's cut off on the edge of the board 
And um, it's an end game, but there's still a lot of pieces left on the board, and it's not really that harmless uh, for black. Uh, this activity of the white pieces. Now the king is stuck in the corner, and um, further cut off from these two pass pawns, which will just keep going. And, and Carlson very accurately converted his advantage. Um, so now he's threatening a discovered check. And uh, and here he kind of calculated things down to the end and decided that even though uh, opposite color bishop endgames are generally drawish, this one is not because of his two very advanced pass pawns. And so he gives it this discovered check, the king goes, and he trades off uh, the rooks and um, he calculated very well that bl the black can't give up the bishop for these two pawns and, and this is apparently a win for white. Um, black just can't do much to stop these pawns. The bishop seems to be blockading them but not really on time because um, they're too far advanced and after king g7 and e7 he resigned because at least one of the pawns is going to promote. So, all in all, typical for this type of endgame with bishops uh, of opposite color and rooks. Typical for Carlsen in, in the way he plays the endgames in sort of unhurried manner. Um, so, very instructive endgame. And um, one of the reasons why I'm showing this is uh, I kind of got so inspired by studying these endgames that I put uh, a collection of such games with bishops of opposite color and rooks into a little. Uh, Little document, little ebook, um, and uh, it's not a video, but um, uh, it's something you can look at on the Kindle device, um, and uh, you can play through the through the game with a lot of diagrams. Um, th this is the same game that shows kind of the the key points. At the at the key points of the end game, uh, there's like a little little puzzle for you to solve. There's a question and uh, you have to figure out what to do. Um, if you go to the next page you see the solution and you can kind of play through the game which might be particularly interesting if um, if you had already seen uh, this video or if you had seen this kind of endgame and you're interested. Uh, there's sort of a lot of uh, different themes illustrated in the book. Uh, this, this this particular game is just from the introduction. Um, you can also there's a whole lot of questions to answer, sort of puzzles, more tactical uh, positions, and they and they all have the same material: rooks and bishops of opposite color. Even though there's also some some bishop end games without rooks as well. So here's another sort of tactical. Uh, position to solve here. This pawn is very far advanced and um, it's white to move. Um, you can kind of guess what the answer is going to be. Uh, white white sacrifices the rook and then when the king takes the pawn promotes. Um, uh, the next position is a little different but there's also white passed pawn and white wins by Sacrificing a bishop on a6, uh, and then the pawn promotes, and the rest of the game is also given. Um, so yeah, that's that. It's a fairly short book, but um, if you have a Kindle, an iPhone, or iPad, or any kind of Android device, um, it's going to work there through the Amazon store. The book is there. Uh, um, um, little cover. Uh, I'm probably going to put up a few more books like this. Seems to be kind of fun. Um, so yeah, check it out if you got interested.